Hi, everybody, and welcome to our show. I'm Steve Ross, and this lovely lady to my right is Heather Moffat. And it's a big day because, well, everybody is still in the throes of Phillies fever because the Phillies the other night went and won the NLCS. You know what that is? Oh, gosh. Now. National League Championship <laughs> Series, which means that they now get to go to the Super Bowl. Close. The, oh. the World <laughs> Series. But anyway, it's all good. Super okay, Bowl, cool. it's like the Super Bowl of baseball. Okay, gotcha. And it's exciting because if you're... Somebody scoring a touchdown, that's yeah, all I somebody. know. Yeah, somebody. You know, but if you're a lifelong <laughs> Phillies fan, you know what happens? Is you go through your life going, Oh God, what's going to happen now? Because you're always thinking about the worst. But now that they won and they're in the World Series, everybody's going, Oh my God, what's going to happen now? So, go Phillies. Yes, we can. Let's bring the championship home. It's only been 25 years since it's been a major championship in the city of brotherly love. Now... Back to why we're here, harness racing. And we do have a lot of good stuff to cover this week. Those we got some major three year old open paces to cover later on the in Around the Oval. We got some terrific action here at Harris Chester. The Drivers Challenge took place. And without any further ado, because it tends to get so messy, here's Heather with all that. Actually, you just talked about the Drivers Challenge. We're going to show the race that kicked off the Drivers Challenge. And here we've got PH Breakaway two seconds and a win in his past three races. Talk Forever is the race favorite. Was that a horse <laughs> named after you? You. No, yeah, you. <laughs> you got me. Tell you. Fifth Wave. He's been <laughs> having a little bit of trouble getting into the races lately, but I think he'll like this company a little better in here. Okay, let's watch. They're off. PH Breakaway is fastest away from the center of the track, and he's joined immediately by Talk Forever. Talk Forever with the head in front. He's driven up to take the lead before the first turn. Talk Forever, and he opens up by two from PH Breakaway. PC Makebuck is parked from fifth wave. PC Makebuck was awkwardly gated there momentarily. Will now drop into the fourth spot. Western Game is fifth fastest away and six and a half from the lead. Ace Buku is next in line ahead of Artificionado. And Tyler A is the early trailer. They're single file past the quarter in 26 and three. And it's Talk Forever who dictates the terms as they pass us the first time. Talk Forever by a length and a half from PH Breakaway in fifth wave is just off the speed in third. CC Makebuck is fourth. Western Game moves first over. He's just four lengths off the lead, and Ace Buku is tracking that cover. Tyler A tips third over from the back of the pack, and Artificionado stays in at the cone. Seven lengths off leader Talk Forever through a half mile of 55 and 1. Across the bridge and onto the backstretch. Talk Forever leads a length and a half from PH Breakaway, who's getting a perfect pocket ride. Western Game moves within two of the leader from first over. Fifth wave is locked in. Ace Buku is gapped on cover and four and a half from the front. CC Makebunk is gapping the cones. Tyler A is behind stale cover. And Art Aficionado is seven and a half lengths from leader Talk Forever as they move into the far turn. Three quarters in 122 and four. And Talk Forever tries for a pillar to post performance here in the second. But PH Breakaway edges out of the pocket with three sixteenths to go. Western Game is stalling between rivals. Tyler A moves three wide. Fifth wave continues to save ground. He's two off the lead, and now he angles to the outside. Top of the stretch. It's PH Breakaway with the head in front. Talk Forever is all out, and fifth wave is giving chase inside the 16th, and fifth wave takes the lead. Fifth wave and Yannick Jingra, they make a great team because this is their first outing together. Not only does fifth wave win in 151-3, and three, which is a lifetime mark for him, mm -hmm. but... The horse was 15 to 1. What a long shot. Talk forever. He did the work on the front. Fifth wave, he got a great trip and just came home faster. Let me just tell you about second and third. PH breakaway was second with George Napolop sorry, George Napolitano Jr. So that's your mouth. Best. Yeah, mouthful sometimes, George. <laughs> and then um, Art Aficionado. Goodness gracious, I'm telling you. Napolitano, the aficionado. <laughs> <laughs> he was third with Cat Manzi. I just wanted to tell you those drivers because this was the kickoff to the driver's challenge. Neat. In Sunday's fourth race, the Harris 
Chester Drivers Challenge once again. <laughs> it was not an uneventful event. Basso Hanover with George Napolitano Jr. Notice how nice he is in that? <laughs> nice. Not the art aficionado. Seven to five, full of fire with Dubay was the three to one second choice. Hey on Hanover and Tim Tietrich, the five to one third choice. And here's the call from James. Hey on Hanover left sharply from the outside. Early speed as well from full of fire at the cones and Basso Hanover is up close. Urbino Hanover. Nasty fall. Also down Patello Manzi. We have loose horses in the back of the pack for the first turn. And Hay on Hanover has come away with the lead. Hay on Hanover by a length and a half from full of fire. Six lengths back is Basso Hanover in third. Two lengths more than to My Secret Weapon. A break of eight to B. Tom. All American Bomber is loose at the back of the pack. Urbino Hanover. Walking away on his own power, opening quarter, 28 seconds. Drivers, use caution as you approach the far turn. Again, drivers, use caution approaching the far turn. And Catello Manzi is back up on his feet on his own power. Meanwhile, up to take the lead is Basso Hanover, brushing to the front from Hay on Hanover. The half was 56 and 2. They're across the bridge, and Basso Hanover leads by 2. Second is Hay on Hanover, then full of fire, two lengths back to My Secret Weapon. It's then a separation of about 12 to B. Tom. Loose at the back of the pack is All American Bomber. They've got five sixteenths to go. At its Basso Hanover, went front by a length and a half. Full of fire moves up at a second from Hay on Hanover, a loosely tracking third. My Secret Weapon is four lengths off the lead. It's far back then to B. Tom, 124 and 1, approaching the top of the stretch. Full of fire has drawn alongside Basso Hanover. Four lengths farther back to Hay on Hanover and to its outside, My Secret Weapon, 150 to go. Full of fire leads by a length and a half and is drawn clear from an all out Basso Hanover. Scary stuff indeed as Cat Manzi, who just returned from the races after that spectacular spill here at Harris Chester on Super Stake Sunday, August 17th. Well, he was involved in another spill, and he's only been back like a couple of weeks, which is pretty scary. He went down, as did David Miller. They both turned out to be okay, thank God. In the end, Full of Fire got the money for Dubay, winning in 153 flat. My Secret Weapon, a 14 to 1 bomber, with Dave Pallone was second, and Hey on Hanover, Tim Tietrick was third. And we got a chance to catch up with Cat Manzi and ask him about the mishap. Just take us through that, Cat. What happened there? Well, you know, uh, these things can happen at any time, but as the gate was leaving, one ho the horses got kind of close, and one horse just touched the wheel, which happens a lot, and, and nothing happens. But in this case, the horse tripped and fell. And, uh, you know, we were 50 yards out of the gate, and I was right, you know, you, you don't even have time to get out of the way. The time you react, you're already hooked up. And it dumped me out onto... Uh, uh, Dave Pallone's bike, and then uh, that may have saved me from getting hurt real bad. And I, then I bounced off the bike and and got banged up a little, but I'm okay. Thank God, everybody's okay, horses and and drivers. It, what goes through your head, particularly to your psyche, with what happened last time? As it's happening, is it all happening too fast, or do you say to yourself in the middle of it, "Oh God, not again"? You know, as it happens, you you don't have time. To, you know, if you think you're scared at all, that it, that's not true. I mean, it just happened so quick that you know, there's nothing goes through your head. You're just you know trying to survive it as it's happening. Uh, it's you know, it, and after it's over, you know, you uh, you know, I've been this is my 40th year of driving. This is not the first time, <laughs> so I just ignore it and go on and, and go back and do it again. That's what I try to do. I think you could be described best as hickory tough. What do you think? Well, you know, I like the sound of it, but I don't know if it's true. Thank goodness everybody turned out to be okay in the race. The drivers were okay, Manzi and Miller, and also the horses were okay, so everything turned out okay. All right? Yeah. Stay with us, because when we come back, we'll have more of the Harris-Chester Driver Challenge right here. Don't go anywhere.